and we would eat one fourth or two fourths, et cetera. So again, uh, we we did math in all kinds of ways. We went to the grocery store, and uh, you know, and and you can and you can eat part of that math as well. Okay, let me keep going. Uh, as far as that early childhood, one of my favorite toys is the Braille math blocks from Uncle Goose. And, of course, I know you're going to notice that these are in the Nemeth Code. And I also know that Canada has adopted um, UEB for, for your mathematics. So, um, well, I got them to do them in Nemeth is all I can say. Uh, you may need to talk to them about whether uh, you want them to also make a set uh, for uh, Canada. Also what you need are, I think, some wonderful early childhood books. And some of those are available from APH. These are not, if you looked up in the APH uh, catalog, which is, of course, in case you don't know, stands for the American Printing House for the Blind. Uh, if you look at the catalog, you can't find these books under mathematics. These are, these are not what APH considers math books. But since, in my opinion, math is in everything, of course, these are also math books. Uh, going on a bear hunt is really pretty fun. And you can see, if you can see the screen on, on the cover, there is a straight line, you know, uh, on this hunt. And then there's, he goes up. So there's a curve kind of going up and then back down again and so forth. So the book has all kinds of wonderful uh, graphs, I'm going to call them, at this level where the child can go on the bear hunt and follow, uh, you know, these various lines going up and down and around and so forth. With Splish the Fish, we're talking about things like the fish is between or above or below. All of these kind of words are the words that are mathematics at this very early level. Mobility, orientation, mobility instructors should really love this because they are teaching uh, math concepts when they're doing many, many of their uh, concepts. Another favorite for the early childhood is the Focus in Mathematics kit. Notice it's second edition. Uh, I was not crazy about the first edition, uh, so if you happen to have that, I am not talking about that edition. This one has hundreds, as it says, of manipulative items. So many, many things are included in this, along with the teacher's guide. Uh, you can see from the picture that there are storyboards, there are tokens. Uh, it also includes base 10 blocks uh, and oh, uh, consumable number lines, just tons and tons of things. Uh, and uh, just to let you know, some of you are probably wondering, well, how did APH get to include all that? Because usually uh, things that are on federal quota funds uh, don't have something that you can purchase elsewhere. Well, uh, as APH told me, we can do it as long as it's a kit. Of course, I realize in Canada that uh, a, just because it's from APH doesn't mean it's on federal quota fund. Uh, for you. However, there are still quite a few wonderful tools uh, that I'd still want to advocate for you're getting from APH, and even though you have to pay, quote, real money, unquote. Number and quantity. One of my favorite things is a very, very basic tool. It's the, and I, and I, by the way, call plural abacai because I tease my students and I say, I don't allow cusses, abacuses in my class. But if you say abacuses, I won't get too upset with you. But anyway, we have the Kramer abacus, which is just your, the, you know, the regular abacus that most of us uh, use to teach our students. And it comes in a, a regular size and a large size. And it now comes with a beginner's abacus kit. Uh, which has the basically uh, two, you've got your ones and your tens rods, your beads, and then we somebody asked for an expanded beginner's abacus kit, and now we have uh, we have the rods and beads for ones, tens, and one hundreds. So uh, again, we have the abacus covered. Uh, when you are teaching abacus, I would really advise that you teach it as early as possible these days. I used to teach abacus when I was teaching high school students, uh, but at that time, we were not allowed to use a calculator on uh, standardized tests. Now it has come just totally to the other extreme where we are required to uh, provide the students with a talking, in this case, talking graphing calculator, and we'll get to that later on. 
But uh, we have definitely changed in my 38 years, as I said, from needing to use the and knowing how to use the abacus to be able to pass a standardized test in with, within the time limit. And that was something else, that uh, having that abacus really speeded up the process if the student is not able to use a calculator. And at the lower grade levels, this can very well be the case. So please uh, do consider the abacus. I think it is still a very viable and wonderful tool, um, but you're going to need to get in there very early to teach it because by uh, middle school, they're already being exposed to scientific calculators. And then, of course, by in, at least in the United States and in Texas, by eighth grade, we must provide them with a graphing calculator. Other manipulatives to enhance your number system concepts. Uh, this is a picture of DigiBlocks. And some, some of my friends really love this for the elementary student. Instead of using the base 10 blocks, which you really can't break apart, they, ha they come in the little parts already broken apart, but it's not like you can kind of glue them together and then take them apart again. Uh, that's what the advantage is of DigiBlocks. And since you're already having to pay real money for everything, uh, and DigiBlocks is not from APH, I will tell you, you will have to definitely pay um, real money for DigiBlocks. But hopefully you can tell from the picture that they start out with ones, and then you put 10 of those ones in a little rectangular box and put the lid on. And the lid won't go on tightly until you have 10 compacted into that. Then once you have each of those 10, those little rectangular boxes that have 10 in, you can put 10 more of those in, and you will now have 100, and you will have a larger rectangular box that has the 100 in them. And then if you put 10 of those, of course, you get the 1,000. And my understanding, I, I have used them very, you know, pretty limited myself because of, of teaching usually the older students. But all of my friends who do use these at the elementary level absolutely love them, and they say that the students really, really understand those um, place value uh, concepts so much more easily with this particular tool. Uh, of course, you have to have a 100 chart. This is something that is in every elementary uh, classroom. And we have a choice. We have this large 100 chart. Actually, two comes in the, in the 100 charts from APH. We have the one where you can actually fill it in with however you wish, and then one that's more permanent that has the numbers 1 through 100. And then we also have a consumable set. I remember we used, I used to have to make these from scratch and get the graph paper out. So it's so nice that they're already prepared and uh, that we don't have to go out and get those. Um, there is, uh, in Canada, there is Tactile Vision Graphics. They have also have a hundreds chart. You might want to investigate uh, and look at their hundreds charts as well. I would certainly uh, check out the prices and uh, get the one that you feel like is the best for your student at the right price. What's so nice about today is that you can actually go bargain shopping. Uh, like I said, uh, there, were a lot, there was not that much competition back when I first started, and now we have choices. It's really pretty wonderful. Okay, another very, very simple tool that I like for basic math skills is called Quick Pick Math. Again, it's from APH. And what you do is the card gives you a problem in both large print and Braille, and it says one, the one that I'm looking at says one plus four equals question mark. And you have four answer choices, four, five, three, and two. If the child picks the wrong one, they put, they put the, the little, um, I think it looks like a Braille eraser, into the hole that they think is the correct answer. And if it's the wrong answer, it won't pull out unless you have a student who is um, uh, very strong and wants to rip it out. But assuming that's not the case, when they do get the right answer as they insert it in the right place, that, that little card will come right out. So this is something that they can use independently and check independently because, if again, if they're able to remove the card, um, it tells them that they did get the right answer. So, uh, again, I love these. These are uh, available in addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and very simple. 
can be used independently, uh, and it's, it's kind of it's pretty fun. And I'm going to show you something else. It's called Math Flash. Unfortunately, Math Flash is not quite as cute as it, as it used to be. It used to come with a, a mentor that flew in or genied in or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, what I'm from what I've been told, uh, the the operating systems that we now have. Uh, are are not allowing of that to happen anymore. But I'm still going to try and show you what Math Flash looks like even without that. So let's see if we can get that to work. Negative one plus three. Two. Yahoo. Negative seven divided by negative seven. One. Excellente. Negative eight minus nine. Negative one seven. Rock and roll. Negative four times five. Negative two zero. Out of sight. Fifty divided by negative two. Now I'm really going to intentionally try to get this wrong. Two. Sorry, Charlie. Two three. Sorry. Fifty divided by negative two equals negative twenty five. Now. Oh, boy. You answered four out of five correctly in 43 minutes and 37 seconds. Now, that would have set a much uh, slower time, except that I had that waiting in the background there. So that's what happened there. Uh, anyway, uh, you noticed that I had put in some problems. Those were my problems that I made up, and they involved negative numbers. When I first got this and needed to beta test it, I thought, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Because this is really more for younger students. And I have the, you know, the the uh, students I have, the, the lowest level is pre-algebra. Well, and algebra one, they loved it. By putting those negative numbers in, what they did was, let's see how fast we can go through these problems and get them all right. And they had little competitions with each other. So again, I think it's still a very fun um, uh, way to practice those basic math skills. And the teacher or you, uh, and by that I mean the math teacher or the TVI or the parent, whoever gets this, can come up with uh, problems that the student might need and want to practice. I'm going to tell another story about this. In fact, uh, one of the teachers uh, that I went out to visit and to support, I, I, in fact, I went out and found out that all I was there was not, I was not there to help her and tell her what else she needed to do because she was doing everything perfectly. Uh, when her student got to the her her lesson on technology, she, uh, she she had a difficult time with it because she had very small fingers and could not reach uh, from the home key to where she needed to reach without going off the home keys, which can be scary. Anyway, um, she was told to please keep going and if she completed her technology lesson, she would get to have her reward and guess what her reward was? Her reward was to play with Math Flash. I, my heart just, my, you know, just pitter pattered over that. And of course, the the uh, TVI said to me, she just, well, you know, I have been to every one of your um, uh, workshops. <laughs> so anyway, I I just want you to know, I would love it if I found out that you were using this for a reward. There is something that you know is now more tech uh, tech technology oriented than this one that's got a little more bells and whistles and that's the math robot iOS app it works with your iPad or your iPad mini and uh, it has to run on iOS 7 or later and you can even use it with a re refreshable braille display and my understanding is that it is available both in Nemeth and in UEB math so you can um, this is something that you could definitely use in Canada uh, there's also a hands-on computation tool called the Math Window, and it's available in Braille and large print. Now, the one that you're seeing here is the large print with Braille on it. But I, and some people like me, I thought, ooh, that's the one I want to get. That way I can use the same tool for both my large print students and my blind students. Well, the problem is that when you get the large print, the Braille is going to be is not going the spacing is not going to be as you know nice and close as it should be. So truthfully, if you have a student who reads Braille, you definitely need to get the regular print and the Braille version rather than the large print and Braille. So I'm I'm sorry if you like this tool, you you really should get 
the large print one for your um, for your your large print students and the braille one for your um, uh, did I say that right? And the braille one for your braille readers. And just to let you know, it is available both in um, Nemeth Code and in UEB for your math. Okay. And by the way, just want to tell you this, I'm saying this is my favorite tool, but only for if the math teacher needs to show something or you need to follow up in showing what the math teacher is showing in another way. Uh, I tend to not like it uh, if, if, it, if the child is supposed to manipulate using this. Because if you think the Braille writer is slow, this is so much slower yet. And if they're having any trouble with fine motor skills, we get into a lot of difficulty. So again, uh, more for, in my opinion, more for demonstration uh, by the teacher, by the TVI, by the math teacher to show the student. Publications and videos, uh, to go back to what we were just talking about with the number and quantity, uh, I do show you how to do something a little different on the abacus called prime factorization. And I do have a little write-up and I also have a video uh, describing that and showing you how to do that. Uh, I had students uh, this last November, uh, that's last month, uh, for my tools class in my short-term programs class. And I had one young lady who was in Algebra two in that class. And it was so funny because I think she mainly came uh, for the high tech, for the graphing, a talking graphing calculator. However, she went away loving the abacus because she was actually working with complex numbers and while the, the particular homework that she had that week, uh, she had to actually do some prime factorization with it. And she had some trouble doing that uh, until she saw how to do it on the abacus. So I love it when a student uh, comes to that math tools class and leaves saying that their favorite tools are the abacus and the talking graphing calculator. It's just, uh, it's, Quite the irony, in my opinion, that the low the uh, the low tech tools and the high tech tools are are sometimes equally advantageous for some of our students. Okay, now we're into algebra. Okay, Math Builders K through three is what it looks like, what algebra looks like at that very low grade level, and it's mostly matching, sorting, and patterning. And you've got your storyboard with all your and all kinds of things to put on it, all kinds of shapes. Uh, you have your uh, peel and feel stickers, you've got 2D manipulatives, and you have a lot of consumable uh, worksheets to work with. And you can also do patterns on that hundreds board that we showed you earlier. You can do, in this case, star, circle, triangle, square, star, circle, square, excuse me, I just they said that all wrong, star, circle, triangle, square, and so forth. Okay. Uh, also, Math Window has an algebra add-on. So you get your basic Math Window, and then you just go ahead and get the algebra tiles and add it to that original basic board, and you now have an algebra board. Uh, there are also student-generated graphics on a coordinate plane, and my favorite for this is the ATH Graphic A for Mathematics. And you'll notice that on the, the student on my left has, uh, is doing a linear equation, and the young student on the right is actually doing uh, some geometry. Uh, so what I do is we take it, we divide it into the four quadrants using rubber bands for the X and Y axes, held down by thumbtacks. But you can also change this to yarn, or you can do tape. You can do anything that works best for your student. Uh, so just to let you know, don't just use what comes with the tool. And by the way, when you open this up, be careful uh, because in, as you open it up, a lot of people just pull out the board and don't realize that there is a very skinny cylinder also in the box that has your push pins, rubber bands, uh, and the wires. The wires are for uh, creating circles. And if you look at any of my videos, you'll learn uh, how to do all that. So what else? We've got the talking science fit calculators that I mentioned. The Orion TI-36X is no longer being made, uh, the TI one is no longer being made by TI. So the ones that are still available are at Orbit Research, and I believe they are uh, $249. So if you still want a, an Orion TI-36X, 
I think they still have a few available. Basically, Orbit Research uh, bought TI out of all of their remaining TI-36Xs and have voiced them, and it's an excellent calculator. Uh, however, in the meantime, um, uh, I managed to get Orbit Research and ATH to uh, collaborate together, and uh, one of their products that they uh, have collaborated on as far as talking scientific calculators is the Orion TI-30XS, which is now, it's available in federal quota money. You would have to pay real money, which is $399. This basically for us in the United States is replacing the Orion TI-36X because it is still available. TI is still creating this calculator. It has a few more functions than the TI-36X, but as I mentioned, it does have that higher price tag. Uh, both of the 36X and the 30XS are excellent scientific calculators, so in case you're wondering. Um, and I'm going to have to say this is not necessarily my favorite thing, but the Psi Plus 2300 Scientific Calculator with Speech is available to you. It is the only um, calculator that it has, you know, the large keypad and the large display. And it is from Canada, so again, you might be very well, might be interested in, in uh, checking that out. And the other calculator that I wanted to mention is a talking scientific calculator by Adam Crozier, and it is an app, and it's available. Uh, I've given you a URL for you to be able to purchase that. I believe it's uh, still $4.99, and it's the only one that I feel is really uh, very truly um, accessible. And uh, I'm not saying that there aren't other calculators that are available um, for those people with low vision, but right now I'm talking more completely accessible to anyone who is blind. And then we come to the Orion TI-84 Plus Talking Graphing Calculator, which is my favorite thing as far as talking graphing calculators now. And it is available from APH with federal quota money, but in Canada it would cost you $599. So it is definitely not cheap. I'm hoping you're going to be able to hear this. I'm going to turn it on real quick. And I'm going to... So I'm going to graph for you Y equals X times sine of X. And what you're going to hear first is the calculator actually graphing the points because I insisted on that. We can't let a student just hang out there with silence for a while. So the first... Uh, little sounds you're going to hear are the are, is the graph being plotted, and then you you are going to hear the graph. Let's see if you can can hear it. Okay, so there's a, just a little uh, bit of that, and uh, it's a wonderful calculator. If you weren't able to hear it terribly well, uh, I apologize. I tried to put it up as high as I could. Uh, anyway, you heard some static. It gives you static when it, the graph goes below the x-axis. It also vibrates, uh, and it sings the graph to you. There's just so many more things which uh, I'm, in just a moment I'm going to show you where you can go to find out much more about that. And there's also a Psi Plus 2500 Talking Graphing Scientific Calculator available in Canada if you prefer this. So I'm just going to let you know that exists. And for those low vision students, they have many more choices. You have a large display scientific graphing calculator solutions. If they, if they can, they can just use whatever calculator the rest of the class is using and, you know, either, either alone as it is with a small magnifier or under some type of CCTV. Uh, but if that's still not large enough, the, there is the TI SmartView 2.0 emulator software package for the TI-84+. Plus. And uh, as you can see in the picture, it, it basically has a picture of the calculator itself. And so you can just you can use your mouse and you could punch all of those buttons like just like a regular calculator. But instead of only being able to see one screen at a time, you are actually able to see 
four screens. You have your so that's that's very um, different because most of the time you're I, as I mentioned you're only able to see one screen at a time. So it truthfully it has an advantage in that the person could see the graph, could see the data table, and could even see um, the list of equations that are being graphed. So um, for some people, they might even prefer that smart view. But of course, you have to have a uh, computer to have that on. And then we also have some uh, folks are going to the TI Inspire. And um, that is available also from TI. There is no, just before you ask, there is no talking uh, version of that at the present time. Um, uh, and again, this is for low vision students that I'm talking about right now. And then we have the Sci Plus 2200 Scientific Calculator, which does not speak. Uh, that's also available from Canada. And then Scientific Notebook, which I have used over the years with certain of my low vision students, but I've had to be very careful about its use because uh, at the present time it is not allowed uh, on our standardized tests because it does have a computer algebra system in it. It's just that powerful. And, and so um, they don't want uh, us to have that on our standardized test here in Texas. But again, it's a wonderful uh, tool. And some of my low vision students, it is the thing. It has been the uh, absolute calculator for them. I had a student who had dyslexia as well. And again, um, that was just the greatest uh, tool for him. Uh, also, uh, just to keep up with the times, some large display graphing calculator solutions on a tablet. There's the Desmos graphing calculator, which is available for iPad and Android, and the free graphing calculator by William Jockish, which is available for iPad and Android as well. Desmos is really trying um, to, they, they are a nonprofit organization, and they're really trying to get into uh, the graphing calculator. Um, market. They're trying to be the calculator, at least in the United States, as far as um, you know, being online and on uh, being being available on a calculator or on a uh, on a excuse me on a phone or on a tablet. Uh, they still have a ways to go as far as being completely accessible, but they are trying, and they picked my brain some about it. So they keep saying they they are trying to get it. Um, fully accessible. But at the present time, uh, it's it's fine for large display, but I'm not yet ready to recommend it for a, a person who is blind. Now, the free graphing calculator by William Jockish, they, this is just an individual, and he was terrific. He has listened to our request to add, um, you know, the ability to make the font larger, the ability to make the lines uh, thicker and so forth, he has really gone out of his way to make it um, accessible for a low vision student. But again, it, it is not accessible for a blind student either. Okay, so now I promised you there were all these publications and videos. So there are um, more publications and, and videos on, on this particular slide, uh, more URLs for you to be able to um, find out more about what I just talked about in algebra. And the videos are on the Orion TI-36X, and that's the older calculator, and the Orion TI-84 tutorials. I talk about graphing simple functions, gathering information, plotting points, line of best fit, working with matrices, and then using the Orion TI-84 Plus in the classroom, you can see certain um, snippets from me working, actually working with students using it. Um, I don't believe I have anything on the Orion TI-30XS on this website or my others, but I, if you ask about it, I do have something. I do have a little script that I have written up um, about the TI-30XS, kind of a little bit of an introduction, but I need to get that up on the, on the website. Uh, we're moving on to geometry. Okay, Math Builders Unit 6, Geometry K-3. through This is an absolutely wonderful kit. It was the first Math Builder kit that I saw and fell in love with. Uh, maybe it's just that geometry thing. But the main thing I'm going to say as you're looking at this, you do have your 2D manipulatives, you do have your storyboard, you have your 3D manipulatives. But if you'll notice, the favorite thing on there are the GeoMetro nets which, of course, you can you know, form all kinds of 3D models. 
that's what I fell in love with. And when I saw those, I just went crazy. Now, first of all, you have to I have to know that uh, these are from Canada, and Anna C. Discorum actually sent me a package of these, and she she sent me I think a, a, a version about this size. And the, in those days, of course, I didn't know who she was or anything. And I wrote back, and I and I was just ecstatic. But I calmly wrote her back and said, uh, we laugh about this now. And I said, I think I need more for, for a better evaluation of your product. <laughs> and so then she sent me a whole bunch. And, a boy, I was telling APH, you better get this. You better get this woman. And she lives, she, you know, she's uh, from Canada. So possibly she would let you be the sole distributor in the United States at least. So anyway, look what happened. All right, here's what, what did happen. First of all, if you guys need to contact her, her website is www.geometro.net. Did you notice that? I think that's the cutest thing, that she's .net and these are nets. Okay, so anyway, here are a few of my students making an icosahedron, a dodecahedron, and just making something pretty that they think looks kind of like a flower, and then a whole bunch of other, other 3D solids. And, of course, I told Anacita what she had done was not enough, and I needed more and more and more, as I said. So now you can get them in the mini, medium, or large. Uh, if you get them directly from her, I would go straight to the large forget the many and the medium because your students and your math teachers are going to want to play with these. And by the way, you are going, you've got something here to trade with your math teachers because the math teachers, the regular ed math teachers love these to death. They want to use them with all of the students in, in, the, in their classes. And, and of course, I said more, more, more. So now we've got more geometric shapes. We have rectangles, octagons, decagons, isosceles triangles, because the first ones were were uh, equilateral triangles. And we have hook materials, those little orange uh, rods. We can use those to make diagonals through 3D models. Uh, and you can show skew lines with them. Just lots and lots of wonderful things. And I said more, more, more. So now we have also we have the cylinders and cones that we can make. And those are not easy. That's why they just got done. If you'll notice, boy, are, did she have to do a lot of work to put those together. It's, it's just not very easy to try to come up with a net for a cylinder and a cone, but Anna Cita did it. In addition to that, we have the Omnifix cubes, which are from the United States, but they're not from APH, and they don't cost a lot, and I just absolutely love them for creating 3D models that you need with those cubes that they love to put on standardized tests. Here's a little math plan. What you do is you put one cube where it says one, and you put three cubes where it says three, and they hook together from the sides. And then you've got two, you put two cubes and you stick that, in, basically connect that to the three, and then the four connects to the two, and you have just built a nice uh, little building that is one story tall in one place, three story tall, two story tall, and four story tall. And again, we uh, uh, we do these all the time, and the students absolutely love them. They can see the orthographic views. They can pick it up because all the omnifix means they all clean together on all the sides, not unifix cubes. And so they can actually pick up what they have created and look at the front or the back or the side and basically get all those orthographic views that they need for standardized tests. Um, geometric manipulatives, they need lots of them. And uh, I, I love the one on the left, which your math teacher should have, but they might not. And that is a 25 different shapes. There's an oblique cylinder, which is like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. That's why I needed to go to something like this to make sure that I had uh, all, of the, all of the models, all the shapes and so forth that I needed. If the math teacher doesn't have one of those, she'll want one. Then we have 2D manipulatives. Mine happen to be not colored, and, and they're called discovery blocks. And they're made out of wood. I'm not. I think these are made of something else. Uh, but I'm just trying to show you pictures of things. But um, there may be, you know, maybe from a different company now. But if you've got something like this, and then I love my templates over here, or you might think of them as stencils. And the, a lot of people don't even think about students needing or being able to use stencils if they're blind. It is so easy if you put something like this on a draftsman or a, an easy intact board, which I'll show you in a moment. You, you take a stylus, 
you they can draw so beautifully and instantly with these. They can feel as they hit those vertexes on the inside. Trying to draw around something is much more difficult than using a stencil and drawing on the inside. And again, I have videos to show and prove that. Uh, drawing and construction tools more. Okay. Uh, in the bottom left hand corner, that is the easy intact. And on the extreme right is the APH Draftsman. Since you are in Canada, I would really advise that you go with the easy because uh, it's cheaper than the Draftsman. And truthfully, I think it's sturdier. And you'll see the stylus is sitting out on top on the intact. But truthfully, I mean, that, and that's where you would keep it when you're drawing. But when you want to go ahead and store it, it when that you open it up with that frame and the stylus fits inside and is sn snugly trapped within the frame so you don't lose it, which I'm always worried about losing with the draftsman. The draftsman is a little more difficult in, as far as I'm concerned of, of trying to get the film in. They both use the same type of film. Uh, again, um, most of the people in the United States are going for the draftsman, but that's only because it's on federal quota money. Um, so if you have your choice and you're going to have to pay real money anyway, again, I just can't say enough about the easy. Uh, there's also in the very middle on the bottom, that is the brand new APH uh, beam compass, but they don't call it that. I think they call it compass for, what is, oh, uh, I want to say tactile compass for drawing or something like that. But anyway, that's you, you've got the picture, so you'll be able to find it if you need it. Uh, the how press compass, which is above that one, uh, is looks more like the hi regular hinge compass, which I absolutely love. has a tracing wheel on one end, but it's no longer available for purchase. So if you've got one, you know, guard it with your life. Um, the Fiskars compass, which is the blue one, it's for um, it, it has a little pencil in it, but you can put like a sharpie or a 2020 pen or a flare pen. You can put a pen with that's a little thicker in there because that that little jaw will open up and allow for a pencil to be bigger. I'm not sure that you can find that anymore. Uh, if you have one, hold on to it. Uh, the one to the right is now from Statler, and you're supposed to be able to put something in its extended little uh, leg there as well. So that's what you're looking for, is something that you can put a pen or a stylus in. I think you could use that on your draftsman or your easy, but I'm trying to get the easy people to come up with a perfect compass that will work on their drawing board that's going to be better than ever or any of these uh, and still be available for us to purchase. Because what happens is we find one that we like and then they stop making it uh, because they're not making it for our population. They're making it to sell and then they want a new one the next year. So it's the it's next year's variety. Uh, I forgot to mention the one um, that you probably can't even see it. That's on the bottom, um, almost to the left, is the one between the intact and the, the APH uh, beam compass. It's a smaller hinged APH compass, and it comes with their Crafty Graphics kit. Most of my students are not too crazy about that one, but it does exist. And for a while there, that was the only one we could purchase. Okay, more drawing construction tools. Uh, I am all for the Braille Print Protractor, which is the one at the bottom, and this is available from APH. Uh, and you basically draw your angles in the bottom portion. And I'm going to start talking faster as I'm watching my time. Uh, anyway, you can have any kind of drawing board you would like. I have um, a Sewell Raceline drawing board kit which I just use braille paper on and a tracing wheel and, and to draw, but these are excellent on uh, a draftsman or on the intact from Easy. Um, there's just to prove that my students do work and draw a lot. There they are, um, and you can go and and to my some of my publications pages and video. Everything you ever wanted to know about the APH Braille Print Protractor, I have a video on. I can't tell you how many videos I have. Um, and so please go to those pages and look for much more on these uh, geometry tools. Measurement. We have all kinds of rulers available. Um, uh, some of them are probably the ones that our students use the most, and I prefer because they are uni of universal design, are the yardstick and the uh, yardstick, the 18-inch uh, ruler, and the 30-centimeter uh, ruler that are all flexible and they are both in print 
and in Braille. And that's what I mean by universal design. I don't have to stop and think, oh, no, I can't give you this ruler because you're a Braille student. I have to give you this one. I can give one ruler and have two of my students in that class, one who can see and one who can't, and they can both go off and measure the door or whatever I've asked them to measure together as a team, and they have the same exact tool. And again, because it is part of measuring, besides drawing, I do have the protractor uh, there as well. Uh, but my favorite new thing is the tactile caliper. We have not been able to have any precision, uh, and a lot of the, a lot of the um, standardized tests require 1 16th of an inch precision. And I just laugh and say, we, don't, we didn't have any tools to do that type of thing. We do now. And again, it is called the tactile caliper. It is, is from a company called Squirrel Devices. These were two MIT, are two MIT students who have come up with this, and it is absolutely the most marvelous thing, and is available now from National Braille Press, and it will measure, and it clicks each, it's, you've heard of the click ruler, which is for vocational, uh, like woodworking and so forth, but this is a nice, small 12 inch, uh, 12 inches long, regular ruler size, and it measures by the 16th of an inch. Uh, be sure to watch the video, check it out. It is absolutely wonderful. And my students got to see it for the first time in this latest math tools class, and everybody fell in love with it. Temperature, we've got the tactile demonstration thermometer from APH, which is just uh, for you to be able to go back and forth between Fahrenheit and Celsius if you need that. And if you want to get more sophisticated, I'm, I'm telling you, go check out the Talking Lab Quest from Independent Science. Uh, and there I'm showing you a bunch of students at work measuring away and uh, lots of measurement resources uh, on my portion of the website, but also Perkins School for the Blind has many more things as far as science uh, related to measurement and independent science, again, uh, especially in that science area. And now we're zipping over to data analysis and probability. Uh, Basically, I'm thinking in terms of, as far as tools and materials and so forth, in terms of graphics. That's kind of where we're, where I'm thinking as far as us uh, in, in this particular category. And first, I'm showing you a student or teacher-generated Braille writer pictograph, and this is a simple one. And this is student, can be student-created and or the teacher can create. Obviously, uh, you can do it electronically, which is what I had to do to be able to put it on this PowerPoint, but the student can just put this into their Braille writer and Braille away and make a beautiful pictograph. And I'm telling you, I think these pictographs are gorgeous. Here's one that's a little more advanced, uh, but they are just, Braille is just beautiful as far as I'm concerned, and it's it's just so pretty. When If I tried to draw this as a sighted person, I would, I'd rather do one in Braille because I can do a much better job in Braille uh, drawing something like this than I can uh, you know, trying to draw in freehand. I am just not an artist at all. Uh, also, their Venn diagrams are a biggie in this area. And in this, this particular case, I did draw it electronically. But in my math tools class, all my students have to draw their own Venn diagrams. And just, just a little plug in here, that when a student has to actually create their own graphic, they understand and are able to interpret other people's graphics so much better. And this is just from 38 years of experience. Uh, if the student has never created a graph themselves, uh, they have no appreciation for you, for one thing, about all the trouble that you've gone to to create their graphics for them. And they just get a deeper understanding. And my students, they are the perfectionists when they are creating a graphic like this. And again, what they would do uh, would be, and for the most part, they would get a Sewell raised line drawing board, a piece of Braille paper. They would get, and, and this, this particular year, we went ahead and used the Braille, uh, the new beam uh, compass from APH. And they draw two overlapping circles and put that in the Braille writer and label it. Of course, this happens to be a memo. But anyway, and they are done. And they are the perfectionists. They want it absolutely gorgeous. So again, please let your students draw as much as you can because they will understand the graphics so much better if they've had to create them themselves. And but if you would, if you still would like to maybe make one for them and make it a little easier for yourself, 
we do have the Venn diagram template kit from APH, but also Tactile Vision Graphics also has a set of these as well. And of course, Tactile uh, Vision Graphics is located in uh, Canada. So you may prefer uh, to check them out. I would, again, I would check them both out and see which one is the better price, the better bargain for you. I think they're both uh, excellent quality. Now, other helpful tools that you might want to have as far as uh, data analysis and probability and so forth might be some graph paper. Now, this particular piece of graph paper that's being shown there, uh, it's it's not it's kind of I believe it's it's something that APH sells, or it might have been something we just created on our own. But the bottom line is it's a black line drawing on in this case canary yellow paper. But if you look and and that's it may you may think oh it's a lot bigger. It's just that it's closer to the camera. But the other students have black line uh, grids on white paper. These tend to be the two most popular colors because of good contrast. So what you need to find out is what your student likes best. And um, you know we just create our own graph paper. But again, APH does have a, a nice selection of bold line uh, and also uh, you know, well, not Braille, but tactile, a graph paper. But of course, my favorite is still the graph board. As you can see, we've got a graph board there as well. And then we have the student using a compass uh, to do the Venn diagrams because that's part of this. And we have the we do have the Orion T84 Plus graphing uh, calculator there. And then we have a scientific calculator as well. So these are all things that you need um, for this particular standard. Now. What's new in research regarding accessible mathematics? If you would like for your student to be able to use math here for Windows, this is a tool that they can input into the, the toolbar. And you'll see where it says math input box. That's where they would be typing directly from the keyboard. But they do have to type it in this manner. They would have to type three and use the forward slash, open parentheses, three B plus four, close parentheses, equals uh, two, forward slash, open parentheses, B minus four, close parentheses. So they would be saying that. They would be hearing, you know, it would, it would speak it back to them also with using math. Uh, it's, it's basically um, the, the type of, of way that uh, Dr. Nemeth spoke. It would speak it back to them. Uh, and but the math teacher or whomever could also see the expression displayed in the in the area that where it says expression display. So the blind students could go ahead and enter everything from the keyboard, and then the um, uh, sighted math teacher could see what the expression that they had displayed. So this would this is one way of doing it, and they can also listen. They can also listen to the mathematics. It is not, it's not going to show, I'm going to show you something a little different in just a moment. So kind of keep this in your mind, how this looks. They're inputting it in, in, in this method from the keyboard, um, and then they, they have their expression display that is in print. They have all those little other little icons up there. They can also select those, uh, uh, I believe, you know, in, in case if they would prefer to use that and make it, make it slightly um, easier for them. Now on this next slide, this is the accessible equation editor, and this is something that is being um, cre has been created by Sam Dooley at Pearson. And this is, if you look, you'll notice it is definitely Nemeth code. Um, so, but I absolutely, I, I, I wondered should I show this to you guys? But I really wanted to show you it because I just am so absolutely enamored with it. Um, what the student, the blind student does is the blind student can be connected to the to the laptop with this on and can be brailing uh, in, let's say that bottom portion. They are brailing in x squared plus y squared equals 4 in Nemeth code and instantly it will appear in print x squared plus y squared equals 4 in beautiful print as you all can see if, if you're able to see this. And so the math teacher can instantaneously, or the TBI or whoever, or the parent can, in fact, um, when, we, when they were doing some studies, uh, one child, she was so excited that her parents were actually able 
to see exactly what she was writing, but in print as she brailled it. Um, okay, that's one direction. But also the math teacher or the TVI or the parent could be typing in the x squared plus y squared equals 4, and instantaneously the braille will appear in that bottom area, and it will appear um, for a sighted person that way, but it will also appear on the refreshable braille display uh, in correct NEMA. And this, this has never been done before, so that's why I'm so ecstatic that this is, this is a two-way communication method uh, that is instantaneous um, print and braille at instantly the same exact uh, time. It's just phenomenal as far as I'm concerned. And you can see there are some other icons where um, you know the student can go to that and it can actually be more helpful as far as a tutorial if they've forgotten how to um, do a particular Nemeth symbol and so forth. Uh, but bottom line, if they do know their Nemeth, they just braille it in and it pops up in print or as I mentioned, um, the print user uh, types it in print and it pops up in perfect Nimeth code. Something that I have not gotten my, I mean, I haven't gotten mine to put my hands directly on my very own is graffiti. I have seen it um, and I'm supposed to get it uh, probably not until next month. Uh, and that is, it's going, they're field testing it. It is a multiple uh, display for tactile graphics. Uh, Something uh, and of course we, it's it's not that, but we we I'm still waiting also for the multiple line refreshable braille display. But this is for tactile graphics, and again they are expecting to ship in late 2017. But we first have to do that field testing, and it hasn't been done. It hasn't started yet, and it says fall of 2016. So I think there is going to be a, a a bit of a delay with it. But what I have seen was very impressive, and like I said, I can hardly wait to get my um, fingers on that and see how and, and show it off to all my students. So that is the latest and greatest. And other math resources that you may need or want, these are Delta, Didax, ETA, Hand to Mind, and NASCO. Those are all companies that are not for the visually impaired. They are just companies that have a lot of math education type tools. And uh, Math Forum is a good resource if you just need to know something about math, you know, I, it's not for, you know, blind or visually impaired students, but they just have some really wonderful ways of explaining things. And then, of course, the last, again, is one more plug for my online math tutorial videos. And I know that we are really out of time, but if anybody can ask a question uh, fast, otherwise, you do have my uh, email address. and. Oh, you notice I didn't give you my phone because I'm never there to answer the phone. Email is the best way. Okay, do we do we have a one minute question? <laughs> well, that was fabulous, Susan. Thank you very much. That hour went by in an awful hurry. So I know. Uh, see if there's anyone who uh, who has any questions. Just unmute yourself and go for it. Hi, go ahead, Nels. Hi, uh, I met you a few years ago when you were up here for another conference uh, in Sherwood Park. So hello again. Thank you. Nice to meet you again. I'll meet up with you uh, virtually. Yeah. How is the wet? I want to know how the weather is up there. When I went up one time, it was a uh, uh, freezing rain. <laughs> well, yesterday was a, a different kettle of fish. Today is warmer. It's closer to what you would consider about 28 degrees. Ah. Yeah, whereas yesterday, don't even ask. It was, it was not pretty. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's warming up, but it's going to get colder and it's going to warm up. But whatever. Um, have you had a chance to look at a HumanWare's new Braille Note Touch and how they flip some math equations from either the Nemeth code or in UEB and then actually flip it similar to the, the software you were looking at? I, I haven't, and they're very upset with me because we've been trying to, to um, come up with a time that I can do that, and I've just been so busy. But, yes, I do. And, by the way, I, I don't know if anybody wants to come all the way from Canada to this, but we are having a POSBY Math and Science Institute. Uh, we have those every two years, and this one is going to be uh, in, on, in April 2nd through the 5th. 2017 is going to be in Austin, Texas, and they are going to, if they don't get me before then, they are definitely coming then, and they will demonstrate that. 
the competition hymns also has some um some yeah you know, they do some again i was uh you know keeping that because it's so far i've only seen a nemeth but i think they're doing everything but uh anyway so we will see him and uh human wear both at the pause b math and science institute so if any of you are you know contact me if you're interested uh in coming uh in case you want to warm up in april of 2017. <laughs> okay thanks susan thank you you're welcome hi there can you hear me Yes. Hi there. Can you hear me? This is Louise. Hi, Louise. Hi. Um, I just checked out the accessibility dot Pearson um, yes. MathX. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, does it come in UEB Braille at all, or is it all? Uh, no, no, it's all. No, that's. I, I did say that, but I know I was talking fast. It is only in Nemeth. I but I just had to. I just. I just had to show it to you because I just I just okay. love it so much. Yeah, it, but, it works uh, really really well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but I'm I'm still in love with the Nemeth, so I, I I try not to to you know I try to keep all the Nemeth mainly all the Nemeth stuff out, but I I just still had to I felt like I had to show you that. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, that's fabulous. Thank you very much, Susan. Uh, oh. Uh, for sharing uh, all you know about math in uh, in, in an hour, it was uh, it was excellent. I, we all sure appreciate it. So uh, take care, and uh, hopefully we'll cross paths down the road again. Okay. Well, thank you for inviting me. And it was I I have to admit that my um, my temperature here is much warmer, so it's <laughs> kind of nice not having the freezing rain and all that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, thank you for inviting me. Okay. Thank and thank you, everyone. Uh, if we don't talk to you again, have a great uh, holiday break. That's what I was going to t say to you. Happy holidays to everyone. Okay. Yeah. All right. And is it is it okay no. for me to just uh, sign off? No. Is that what I'm yeah. supposed to do? Yeah.